So, hello everybody. Thank you so much for uh, being here with me and um, and for uh, joining me to hear a little bit about Enhance and about what it is to bring uh, cognitive training to VR. Just a little bit, okay. Uh, so, uh, I'm João. Uh, it's like João in Polish. And sorry about it. It's not. Uh, I know it's not really easy. Um, I actually lived in Poland for a bit, and I have uh, deep uh, emotional uh, ties there. Um, I usually vis visit every year, uh, usually more than once. Um, unfortunately, this year, uh, well, it's the situation we are uh, all aware. And um, and so and so yeah. So let's get it going. And um, so just talk a little bit about me. Um, I love game jams and experimenting with new things. I also um, learned that I, I wanted to be a game developer while I was in Poland. Um, and yeah, so I try to do, um, it's very important for me like to try to do a little bit of everything, um, to try like with uh, 2D, 3D, like uh, multiplayer games and, and, to, and to basically explore like what it, what it is um, uh, to actually uh, make a game and what it is, what can a game be and um, trying to break a little bit of these boundaries. Um, I was formerly uh, formerly a software developer at Miniclip, so I'm working in this mobile version of Agario. It's a game that you maybe you heard about. Probably you played it uh, if you did uh, on PC on the on the web, but uh, it's actually um, actually it has more players on mobile and well more revenue. And um, I organized, organized, I don't know, the monthly Lisbon Game Dev meets, uh, some game jams and developer showcase events. And the way I, uh, why I say organized, because, well, uh, you can see from these pictures, uh, like, uh, we Portuguese, we are kind of warm. And um, although our, commu our um, community is uh, it's small, um, it's, uh, well, we are really passionate. And, um, and yeah, and for me, like, Organizing these things, like it's uh, it's very cool, like to bring everybody together. And uh, I couldn't really transition to the um, to the online event. Uh, so yeah, so I hope that when everything passes, I can go back to this kind of uh, um, organizations again. And so uh, not right now, I am a senior Unity 3D developer at Virtualip, uh, working on Enhance, and that's why I'm here and what I am here to talk to you about. So just a little bit about Virtually. We are a, a mixture of scientists, game creators, and entrepreneurs, and we are uh, working um, to, to offer the highest quality possible of games as medicine titles. We have a lot of different nationalities, different backgrounds, and this all contributes for us like, to, to develop like, the, um, the best product possible. And a little bit about Enhance. So what it is Enhance, which is, the, um, which is our main... Um, what we do mainly, like at Virtually, it's uh, so Enhance is this VR app that um, consists on a, on a, a growing library of brain training mini games, which one that tackles uh, one or more different uh, cognitive skills, um, and and uh, this you can see like it's uh, it's being your cognitive skills are being assessed and they are being uh, tested, and you can see like actually your progression, and. Um, and um, one of our key uh, features that we offer a daily workout. So imagine like a workout of the day or what, like as you have like in CrossFit or something like that, that consists on three mini games. It's, a, it's the same workout everywhere in the world and you can fare like against uh, other users. And this, uh, the idea is that you keep visiting Enhance every day so that you can de further develop your cognitive skills. But to actually um, better understand what it is, I will show you a trailer where Nelson Dell is uh, really explains uh, what Enhance is. Hi, my name is Nelson Dellis. I'm a four-time USA Memory Champion, and I've spent years training my memory, building it up from an average memory to a champion-level memory. If there's one thing that I've learned, it's that memory and cognitive skills are trainable. And just like any other skill, they have to be maintained through daily practice. But what if that practice could be more effective, transformative, and more importantly, fun? Let me introduce you to someone. This is Pico. We're gonna show you a few things. Thank you. 
Enhance offers a daily workout of short, fun, and intense games designed to test and train your full range of cognitive abilities. Games that test things like memory, attention, problem solving, spatial orientation, motor skills, and information processing. You'll also be able to keep track of your performance over time, so you'll get access to personalized reports that bring meaning to your personal data. Enhance is effectively a gym for the mind. So what are you waiting for? Start flexing those cognitive muscles and improve your mental fitness. All right, so now we're going to talk about what it actually is to develop Enhance. So this product you just saw the trailer for. Um, what, what my main focus of this talk will be on actually developing one of the mini games. So what it uh, what it goes like from from the beginning till releasing one of those games. But of course, uh, when we are talking about an app that um, that aggregates a bunch of mini games, there is a ground base that um, needs to exist. But so let's just um, talk about it a little bit and get it out of the way. So on a technical level, um, of course, there is like a shared uh, app structure that allows for an easy uh, addition of new games. Um, we have a shared world like this one that you see on your right where, where the games are loaded on. So it means that you are always in the same space, it's just experiences are loaded and lo unloaded in the same place. We, ha we have, uh, um, we release on, on, the, um, on the release 200 a huge uh, UI system revamp. So to actually allow for these new additions and to show um, all the um, important uh, analytics uh, regarding uh, the, the cognitive tests. And we have a shared life cycle control between games, same analytics, and a lot of shared components. And, and this is why, because these games also share the same, um, uh, the same design and science uh, base. So they need to in share the same skeleton. And so what is this science and design base? We, we basically tackle seven main categories that are divided in 17 subcategories. So this, these main categories are, uh, are on the, here, these ones on the right. So spatial orientation, flexibility, attention, problem solving, memory, motor skills and processing. And we, we have a shared scoring system, which also means that we have a shared progression logic. And the way it works is that whenever you play, you receive a score uh, for, um, for the way uh, you did uh, on said game. This game, uh, which is under a category, contributes for the overall uh, score of that category. And then these categories contribute for, for your enhanced performance index score, which is basically uh, your overall score on Enhance. And so, um, before we actually move um, to the to the mini games, uh, I want to like present you um, what we are actually going to explore and see, like uh, that, which which is how the different departments um, share and um, the development process and how they communicate with each other and what synergies are created. So um, we have more than these departments, of course, but like these are the ones that are responsible for the creation of a mini game. So we have the neuroscience department, game design, programming, art, QA, and audio design. And throughout this, uh, this presentation, on the bottom uh, of each phase, you will be able to see which um, departments are involved in the, on, the, on this development phase or not. And so the first phase is research. And on research, as you can see on the bottom, we only have the neuroscience department. And so this is the first step, and, it's the, but, and um, it's the one that defines all development. So what it basically consists in is that the neuroscience department needs to uh, check, um, to, to research for, uh, for uh, existing neuroscience tests and see if there are some that would um, tackle uh, one of the seven uh, categories, or maybe more than one, uh, that we have uh, on the game. And, um, and so let's say for, for the purpose of uh, this exercise, and for the example that I'm going to pick on throughout uh, the, the conversation, the talk, 
um, that the neuroscience department identified uh, a suitable test that tackles attention, and more specifically, the subcategory of sustained attention. W what is this test? This test is PVT, which stands for Psychomotor Vigilance Test, and it, it's quite basic. So as you see uh, uh, on the right, we have the, um, this black screen, uh, and whenever a red dot appears, uh, we, we need to just press some button. So it's basically testing, like uh, measuring the reaction time. And so we proceed on to phase two. And this is the phase uh, where the science test gets converted into game. So we keep the neuroscience department team, but we game design department joins in. And what they need to do and what is the main um, exercise for this phase is to actually um, convert the neuroscience language of the neuroscience test into game development language. So what I mean to say with this is it's, that's basically breaking down um, the test and, uh, and st stripping it from, the, um, from all the things that you can have in a test that says that the, the user needs to be sitting down, that needs to, to have these devices attached or something like this, and breaking it down into game rules. And so it's something like this for PVT. Well, we have this uh, psychomotor uh, vigilance uh, task based uh, on simple tasks, blah, 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 blah. all of this overview procedure, but this is broken down in three rules. So we need a, a, a stimulus needs to be shown on the screen, the red dot or something else, and action is required from the player once this red dot appears, and uh, there is an interval stimulus time. So it's a random time between intervals, and this, this uh, is needed so that the player cannot anticipate. If you, if you make it like every two seconds, the player will know, well, I need to react every two seconds. If you give a rhythm to it, this interval needs to be random. And so comes phase three, jam time. So this is when I come in as a developer, as a programmer, sorry. Um, and so this is the, the part of where the game design presents the requirements to the programming team. So this these um, things where the, 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 that the game design broke it down, like for these three rules that are presented to the programming team. And what ensues is basically a proof of concept season. So this lasts for about one, two weeks. There is no mass, maximum of proofs of concept you can do, like that is to, to experiment as much as possible to actually go wild. And um, a POC is like very rough around the edges. It doesn't have like uh, the art department still not here, so you it will either be reusable assets or programmer art. So it looks really ugly. It's completely independent from Enhance's architecture. We are just testing it out, and it doesn't actually need to work in the way that um, it it uh, can be um, it can be something where you you just say, well, imagine that now it would validate or not. But we, it's something that it's important for us to see uh, the integration, the interactions, I'm sorry. So as a programmer and as someone who really loves game jams, what it really means to me is that, well, it's a one, two week game jam. This one, two week depends on the flexibility of we have for deadlines, of course. And it's a game jam with a really defined team and with mandatory diversifiers. And so for this POC, these are the diversifiers, which is basically the thing that the, um, that game design uh, stripped from the, um, took out from the neuroscience test. So a stimulus needs to be shown on the screen, an action is required from the player, and, um, and um, the interval, and there needs to be a random interval between the stimuli and, uh, and what is being tracked is the reaction time. So let's see what we um, did on this uh, POC season for this game. So this is, I'm terrible at this game, by the way, you'll see me fail everywhere, but this is basically the most uh, clear um, basically translation from PVT to, to VR. So the idea is that you let the blue, uh, ch blue batteries in and you press the button on the red one. Then there is this crazy uh, robot dancing discotheque thing with naked humanoids. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, so the idea here is that, that you just mimic the robot's movements as soon as they appear, or you can have something like more sports-based, where uh, you are a goalkeeper and need to defend the, um, the attempt conversions uh, of the robots. And, um, 
and yeah, so so this is another uh, way you where we could have gone, or um, we can do like a, a Polish winter simulator where you you do like a snowball fight, and uh, yeah, uh, we have a very good example um, in Poland in with super hot of like uh, uh, of a very good um, way of uh, actually throwing things at people's faces in VR that works, but well, I don't think this is a good one and it's kind of, uh, it gets kind of aggressive and yeah, it's just a, I think it's a big no-no in VR unless you are a master's like super hot. And, um, or we can actually have something like a shooting game. And, um, and so you would need to react once the, this apple drops and once it's in the center of the target that you would need to shoot it. Um, and the thing here you can see from the first shot to the second one, there's this random period of time. And so it takes a little bit and the player cannot anticipate it that much. Or you can have something like guacamole, something that you will find in real life. And, um, and it responds to, and uh, it answers the test. It's like you have this stimuli that appears, it's random time between them and you need to react. And the way you react is by actually hitting it with an hammer. And so in the end, we actually went uh, with this POC. It was the most intuitive one. It didn't break uh, the test. And, um, and it was also the one that everybody in the team felt was like, well, the most fun. And so after this POC season, and as I already said for this, um, for basically for the guacamole one, uh, there is an exercise that needs to be made by the neuroscience and design team that where all the POCs needs to be um, to be tested to make sure that the test purposes were not diluted or invalidated. On some of the POCs I showed you, you can actually tell when things are going to happen. Well, if if when the robot is going to to shoot the ball and you need to defend it, um, it you can see that there's a line there, or 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 on when the robots are going to throw you like a snowball, um, well, there's this animation before. So um, some of the POCs, sometimes they break the test a little bit. Um, and um, and this, this needs to be uh, asserted by the game design and neuroscience team. Everybody in the team tests out the, the POCs and gives their own feedback. This is extremely important because uh, it brings like a um, new... Um, new um, visions, like new, new points of view uh, on the POCs that were developed. And it's actually nice to see like um, how you react, like, uh, like in, if you like it or not, like if it makes sense, is it playable? Um, and then in the end, um, we choose one POC or a merge of some, which happened already for other games, uh, not for this one. Um, and, uh, and we, draft uh, an initial uh, game design document. And so comes phase four. On phase four, um, basically the art department comes in. So we have this initial um, game design document draft and what it, uh, it, it's incremental, right? So it starts with, these are the base purposes of the test. This is what we are trying to, to test and assert. And now it actually, with the POC, it's actually a game. So it has rules and all that. But we try to make it as open as possible uh, in terms of how do things actually look like. And this is why, so that art can come in and fill the visual gaps of the game design document. Of course, whatever art purpose, uh, what, whatever uh, art uh, proposes in terms of um, of this visual, for this visual, to fulfill these visual gaps, needs to be again validated by neuroscience and game design to see if it doesn't break the test. So imagine that it was really important for this test to have, um, to have like as much as, um, as focus as possible before the stimuli uh, appeared. Well, it wouldn't be that good like in, with this uh, robot. Uh, discotheque dancing game, right? There's so many things happening, so many colors, and, and, um, and so this needs to be validated. And this is also the, the time where, um, where um, 
programming aligns with art how to, how to fulfill the artistic vision through the best solutions possible, both in terms of performance and, um, or anything else that might uh, arise. So this is for another game. And this is basically an odd one uh, out game. The only thing you need to say is like which uh, object is uh, different or as a feature that no other objects have. And uh, so we have the initial POC, uh, it's using pizzas, but this is because there is another game with pizzas and it's, and it's like just repurposing uh, uh, existing assets. And, um, and in the end, we, we end up like with this much more pleasant uh, presentation of this where we, we actually like can grab and analyze uh, different ads against each other and uh, that we deliver it to the robot that this, this element of interaction um, to the game that we didn't have before. And it's a lot of the art, um, a lot of art department's fault that the game uh, ends up as good as it is. And so um, once this is closed and all the games, um, the idea of like what assets we need and how the game is going to look like it's closed, we enter in the phase of functional prototype. At this point, game design and uh, neuroscience uh, leave the development process and QA joins in. So um, this is the actual implementation of the final game design document draft. It means that art needs to be functional, but not necessarily final. It means that also that the code should be close to final. And uh, what this means is that a lot of the heavy load was uh, done for the proof of concept. We tried to write the proof of concept well, yeah, it's game jam, it doesn't need to be like completely bad code. So we try to write it as clean as possible so that, so that we can reuse it. At least the base, like the algorithmic, algorithmic base of all of it. Um, and it also means that like um, this game needs to be integrated uh, in Enhance's uh, app structure. So it needs to be bootable from the game library. It needs to implement progression and scoring. Uh, it needs to work in the shared lifecycle management um, of the app. It needs to have analytics, and uh, it also needs to have um, implemented tutorial logic. Because we, as we we target uh, like a lot of people, and accessibility is something really important for us. So we really need to have a, um, a tutorial implemented for every game. And uh, and so as I mentioned, this is also the time where QA joins in and they start testing features as they are implemented and doing what QA um, loves the most, which is breaking uh, everybody's heart and destroying hopes and dreams. I'm joking, but QA is cool. And so um, on phase six, it's a phase of refinement and polish. So game design joins in again and audio, but I will talk about audio later. So the idea of game design uh, rejoining, it's um, because now we are in... A, in um, in a phase where we have a playable prototype. So we need to propose, uh, game design comes in to propose iterations from both art and programming. And, um, and, um, and this is a constant iteration loop, as long as we can afford it on the, on the, um, the deadlines that we have. And, so to, and, and it's also important because the game is fully playable. Because as I said, like code should be final, but, uh, or close to final. Uh, but art needs to be only functional. But this is the game is playable, even if it's just just with uh, like the shaders are wrong, the materials are not right, uh, or uh, but at least things are in the position they should be. And so this is the the time for game design to to come and to to start testing different progression values for the game. So that's uh, the idea is to achieve a fair but challenging progression. So we don't want uh, players to become too frustrated. We also don't want players to come. And, uh, and achieve the maximum uh, score, like in uh, in one session, uh, we want them to to have a reason to come back. Because otherwise, if if we are giving you something that promises to improve your um, your uh, cognitive skills, and if you are already the best in the beginning, what, what is there to improve uh, after? And uh, this is another phase where the whole team plays the game and to helps with this fine tuning. So. Everybody has different ways of approaching it, and, and especially like everybody has different cognitive skills. Some some people are better at some things, some people are, are are better at others, 
And so it's important to have the, the whole team playing the game, also giving their feedback if there's something that they feel like more in terms of accessibility that is not working so well, um, and to also uh, achieve this uh, result, this fair and challenging progression. From art, it's the part uh, to go over the initial functional uh, assets and to deliver them as polished and optimized as possible. So for this egg game that I showed you, um, we we add, add this initial table that you can see on the left with the wireframe, and this is the final model. So it's much more complex and it's, it's nicer. It says uh, it has lights that can be controlled by by shader and, and all that. So um, it's uh, it's um, the part where the game um, goes from something that works to something that works and looks nice. And this is also the, the um, phase where audio design department comes in to create and integrate uh, the game's audio, like from background music to sound effects. But one note is that it depends, right? So if we are uh, testing something and the test that we are making, um, it's very uh, audio based. So for instance, we have a game uh, where you are um, playing hide and seek with the robot and you cannot see him but you can hear him and through specialized audio you need to identify where he is well this is again that is very uh, very heavily audio based Oops, i'm sorry so this means that audio needs to to join in and on in a prototype phase and not so late into development and so we we arrive at phase 7 and uh, phase 7 well it's not a fancy phase it's wrapping up. So at this point, we just have like programming, game design, and QA doing like all the final things, uh, like the back office setup, localization integration, like all the final builds and all that. And once everything is complete, um, this means that the game is ready to be shipped on the next release. It doesn't mean it will be released immediately because what I described you, it's basically a pipeline for one game, but we usually do two, three games at the same time. So, um, so this means that once these three games are complete, we can actually bundle them in, in one release and, uh, and do it. And so this is the final... Put the audio a little bit down. So this is the final, final result. Uh, one thing that you may notice is now that we actually have two hammers, which we didn't have on the POC. This this came for two reasons: through experimentation, and people found that it was well, it was nicer, it was more fun with two hammers. But also in terms of progression, um, you you will see in a uh, in a second that uh, we can actually have more than one mole uh, coming up at the same time and having the two hammers allows like for different types of uh, of um, of interactions uh, you can see this level bar going up so this is the we have this level bar in all games it's part of this shared scoring system and um, and you can see on the background that we are on this uh, on this world that uh, where all the games uh, get uh, loaded in so we can, well, should be wrapping up soon. We have the robot on the side. It depends on us, on the games. Like the robot is always there to help you out. He's the one who gives you um, the tutorial. Um, and uh, sometimes it's more integrated. Sometimes it's more of a companion. Yeah, as you can see, like this, this game did not diverge a lot from the POC because it worked right away and it made sense. And in the end, you are presented like with your um, score. Just a little bit of the our common world. And so, what are the takeaways from this uh, from this um, pipeline of development and from this presentation? Well, first one, we should, if it wasn't obvious already um, for everybody, not from this game, but like from everything, serious games can be fun. So 
These are other games we have in our in our app. You already know the, this uh, egg game on the top right. Um, but so basically, we have like uh, this one on the top left it's called React, and the, and it's there to test your flexibility, um, like like your task switching and response inhibition. On the on the um, on the top right is Odeg, which is there to, to see like the problem solving, more specifically um, deductive reasoning. On the bottom left, you have this uh, pizza builder game where you need to assemble pizzas, and um, it will it has a lot of things going on. So it's it's really uh, testing your your attention, your divided attention, as well as problem solving because you have these timers and you need to to manage what. Um, what uh, pieces to assemble, or you have this uh, this but this one on the bottom right is called assembly, which uh, which where you just need to to press the gears to assemble these um, these different devices in from smallest to to highest. So it's uh, it's testing your processing speed, and we are this is all tests. And it's all valid tests, but they are being uh, presented in a manner that is fun, and um, and um, and but they are still valid. And so um, another important thing is that the base neuroscience test do not diminish our creativity. Instead, they give it a direction. So with these with these minor uh, things, this uh, with these three things. Uh, um, we had from that game design extracted from the PVT test, we were able to do something that mimics a device that exists in real life, some, uh, some crazy like uh, uh, pattern matching, um, body pattern matching that you would probably see in, in, in something like O shape um, or something um, like you see on, on the top right that actually mimics the test um, more closely or on the on the bottom left, like a sports game, something with head tracking on the on the snowball um, POC, or or a shooter game, and and this is all for the same test. So by 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 having this test as a base, our creativity is not it's not diminished at all. It's just uh, improves uh, in terms of actually giving it a direction. And this, I think, it's really important for um, for all um, studios that can afford it, and not just VR. Nothing to do with serious games. Nothing, uh, nothing to do with um, with cognitive training or anything. But for studios who can afford it, agreeing on a final direction as a team means that the shared vision is much more present. And so, what I mean with this is that. There are a lot of times where this um, final direction um, it's agreed between um, one team or two teams, and it's just transmitted to the rest of the team. And um, and but having having it this way um, means that there's a lot of doubts, right? There's a lot of like passage of information that you need to do. And, uh, and also means that the, um, you are closing the, the rest of the team uh, from this process of uh, achieving uh, what could be the best direction for it. So the results of, of doing it the, the, the way we are doing it is that we, we have less meetings, we have less back and forth, we have much more certainty about what we are doing, and this results in less mistakes. And on the vein of what I, I was saying, Empowering technical departments such as art, um, audio, programming, even QA to make key definition decisions early on means that you will have a greater ownership, you will have better solutions because everyone will bring to the table the things that they are the best in and not the things that someone thinks they are the best in or, or someone thinks are the, the best way of um, achieving um, something. And this will result in um, in something that will, will well will have a better overall result. So if you can empower um, the technical uh, departments of your um, of your team to be in the in the definition process, to be there from the beginning, and to make key definitions, not just technical, but also um, 
definitions that fully change the way the, um, the final product looks like, this will help you immensely. So last but not least, download Enhance, totally free. We are available on SideQuest for Quest 1 and 2. We are available on uh, Oculus Store for, um, for uh, uh, Oculus Rift. We are on Vive Port uh, for HTC devices, and we are also on Steam. And uh, feel free to follow me. Feel free to follow Virtualip. Uh, everything is there on this slide. Thank you very much for uh, being here today with me. And uh, well, let's see. There's some questions. So, um, how do you conduct mass user testing in VR? Well, actually, we don't right now. And, um, but our analytics have been showing that for our games and the cognitive testings we are doing, um, just with testing the, um, with the people from our team, which is around like 13, um, we have been nailing it on the progression that we want to have. But of course, this is not ideal. And ideally, we, we would have something uh, like, um, like more user testing and all that. And this was the idea also, but uh, well, COVID kind of uh, ruined it a little bit. Uh, how do you make sure the science test doesn't... Okay, how do you make sure the science test doesn't ruin the fun of the games? Um, well, it can, uh, but this is the thing, and this is, I think it's like the idea of the, the entire talk, that like, um, you need, the idea is that you, by, do, by going on this step where, where game design just strips everything that is like very like science-y, let's put it like that, from the test and just leaves the, the game rules, this means that when it, when it reaches the rest of the team, although you are concerned that like these game rules needs to, need to be done, this is game development now. You are, not, you are not really concerned with the neuroscience part because you know it was validated and you know that you will be, um, you will, whatever you do, if you respect this, uh, these rules that were given to you, will um, still be a valid test. And so this is how we go about going about having uh, our games be fun, but still um, be part of the of um, of a test and, and uh, doing the purpose that they have to do. Uh, how many scientists and how much time for research do you need to make a full game? Um, so the science, uh, how many scientists, it depends. Right now, um, we have uh, one, uh, one scientist which is uh, with us, like not external, but before we, uh, we had uh, other, neuro, other and more neuroscientists at the same time. Um, the thing is that there was a lot of research that was done. And, and then, the, um, well, we have a lot of research already and then the, Games take time to make, right? And so, and so, it will. We we are now more focused on the actual, um, actual creation of games. So to make a full game, uh, our games are really short, like in in their intent. Uh, you have something that takes more time. Like for instance, if you if you look at this pizza game, there's a lot of assets, there's a lot of things going on, so it, it takes more time. But on, on the other games, they are short. And um, and and the fact that they are short, and the fact that they are um, that they are um, small tests, means that our development time it's not really that big. You you can and and many times what happens too is that you have a POC that is so good that the only thing it needs on top of it is the integration on the on the on the structure and um, and better art, of course, and the integration of art. So so. We, we do releases every two to three months. And, uh, and yeah, so our games are developed in less than that. Um, so if, uh, as a programmer, do I feel it's hard to convert game jam games into a science test? Um, 
Well, maybe. But the thing is that we are doing it the other way around. So we we already go into the um, we already go into the um, game jam part of it, like so, so this uh, proof of concept phase um, with the um, with the neuroscience test uh, in mind. And so and so yeah. So we are doing the other way around. I think like if if you want to to convert a pre existing game into a test. That can happen, like as someone else asked, like oh, maybe you will take the fun out of it, right? So you wanna because what we are trying to do is add fun on top of something and not like adapt something fun to something else. Um, if we have an internal name for that uh, type of pipeline, um, yeah, we actually do. It's called Easy, which is like E E S I. Um, I don't remember what it stands for, actually. I'm terribly sorry. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we do. And, and we have... Um, so I basically described the pipeline to you, but we actually have... Um, we have, like, diagrams and all that, like, about the pipeline, and, like, and we have, like, timelines and, and all of this, and it's something that we, we change, like, and adapt to this. Um, and it's been working really, really well for us. It's really... Uh, made our games uh, come out much, much faster than before. But um, yeah, don't remember what it stands for. Um, how do you make sure art direction is consistent throughout all games? Um, well, um, the, way, the way it stands, like, for, first we have something common between the games, it's like this, uh, this robot you see, Pico, um, and, uh, and we have the same world. So this means that the assets need to look good on the world, then they need to look good with Pico. So we already have something here. Of course, sometimes we kind of break it. You can have assets more dark in one game and more whitish in the other. And uh, sometimes those um, inconsistencies can happen. And so, and so then we try to, um, we try like in further, um, um, in, in, Consequent releases to, to make it like more similar if we feel that it's really like um, really disconcerting or something like this. Uh, but yeah, but it needs to be it needs to be something that like the, the artists uh, talk with each other and the line um, in like what is the um, what is the art direction, what is the feel of the world, and all that. Um, how big is the game they have seen in Portugal? Well, uh, not big at all. Um, there's some of us, and um, but the way um, the way it works actually is that um, we we have um, we have a really big company in Miniclip, so it's probably like close to 300 uh, employees. I, I was one of them till till January of this year. Um, but then, besides that, it's really small companies uh, or um, or indie studios. Um, and when I say really small companies, maybe I'm not being fair. Like we, we have, uh, we have Lockwood, we have Oma games and all that. But when, when I'm saying like small and small in, in terms of like number of employees, um, and all, all the rest is more in the, um, so yeah, not a lot of investment, uh, and most of the people that, um, at some point end up leaving and going somewhere else. So, so yeah, um, uh, it is what it is, but we are passionate, I think, and I think that um, yeah, we, I think we are good at what we do. Um, if you had to pick one of the games and upgrade it to a standalone product, which one would you choose? Well, um, I'm a little bit suspicious on this one because it's, it was like the first game I did uh, for Enhance, but well, it would be the Pizza Builder game because uh, it's like not that there are not other games that uh, do it um, too, um, but it's kind of like single player overcooked in VR, and uh, well, it's extremely fun to play actually. And um, yeah, so that that is my favorite game, but doesn't mean it's the best one. It's just that yeah, the one I like the most. Um, yeah, so. I still have some time, so I don't know if you guys have uh, any more questions.
uh, please use Slido. I don't know if you if there are questions in um, on Twitch, but I'm not checking it out. And uh, please use the the link that's on the right. Okay. Well, there's nothing more. Uh, thank you very much, and um, thank you very much uh, for the Game Industry Conference for having me. I hope it was uh, informative. I hope you all liked it. And I hope next year I can be there and that we can have a beer together. So, cheers. <laughs>